Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. M. N. Gupta, Emeritus Professor from Department of Biochemical Engineering and Biotechnology, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module lipases in organic synthesis from paper structure and function of biomolecules too. Biocatalysis is considered as a greener option to chemical catalysis. The temperature required are moderate unless use of extremophiles is contemplated. Unless the use of the enzymes from extremophiles or extremophiles directly are contemplated. Pressure is seldom used. All this straight away saves energy consumption of the process. With the possibility of using non aqueous media, lipases undoubtedly are the most frequently used class of enzymes in organic synthesis. So, the objective of this modules are to understand fundamentals of low water enzymology in the context of organic synthesis and then to learn about use of lipases in organic synthesis predominantly in this low water media. And to understand the use of lipases in kinetic resolution of racemates and to look at the various illustrations of the various applications of lipases in organic synthesis. So, the concept map consists of first of trying to learn a little bit of fundamentals of low water enzymology because that is not taught normally under enzymology. Then to look at how lipases are used in synthesis and then how lipases are used in the kinetic resolution of racemates and then give some illustrative examples. From the earlier modules it is clear that lipases are the most versatile enzymes in terms of their specificity. This naturally is an advantage when we employ these enzymes for synthesis of organic compounds. Lipases are hydrolases. So, their use in organic synthesis has to employ low water conditions so that the competing hydrolytic reaction does not take place. For kinetic resolution purposes, however, ester hydrolysis continues to be useful and is often employed in aqueous buffers as a media in a very useful fashion. Also, we have uh, two phase media and even multi phase systems which have been employed, <coughs> excuse me, which includes aqueous media as one of the phases. From organic synthesis point of view, it is useful to see where lipases fit in according to enzyme commission system. Enzyme commission system is a good starting point as it classifies enzymes according to the type of reactions which enzymes catalyze. Hydrolases catalyze transfer of groups to water. They accomplish that by cleaving CN and CO bonds. We tend to forget that in case of hydrolases, water is just not a medium, it is a reactant as well. So, if formation of bonds rather than cleavage is required, water cannot be the reaction medium. Luckily, enzymes, lipases more so are able to function well 
in the absence of bulk water to be used as a reaction medium. We have already discussed the broad specificity of lipases towards both triglycerides and esters. Lipases like serine proteases also form an acyl enzyme intermediate. During hydrolysis, water acts as a nucleophilic acceptor of the acyl group. When water is not around in adequate amount, other nucleophilic acceptor can accept the acyl group. Mechanistically, that is the basis for using lipases in large number of reactions related to organic synthesis. For example, if a simple alcohol R double dash OH were to act as a nucleophile, the products will be R dash OH and R C O O R double dash as an ester. Thus, we will be able to produce the desired alcohols and esters in low water medium. In many cases, esters then can be hydrolyzed by switching over to the conventional aqueous media. This strategy is especially useful in resolving racemate esters. Lipases are used in both aqueous buffers as well as in non aqueous media by organic chemists. In aqueous buffers, lipases produce fatty acids and glycerol. Both of these products, as we have seen, in turn have many biotechnological applications. There is one application of hydrolytic activity of lipases which is useful for organic synthesis. That is the kinetic resolution of alcohols, acids and esters. In the case of first two classes of compounds, these have to be converted to corresponding esters. Given the stereoselectivity of lipases, one specific stereoisomer of the ester is hydrolyzed faster than the other stereoisomer as shown in the equation given in this slide. For example, if only S ester is hydrolyzed, R ester remains while acid and alcohol corresponding to S esters are obtained in chirally pure form. In reality, the stereospecificity of the lipase is not absolute. So, it is more realistic to talk of a particular stereoisomeric form of the ester being preferentially hydrolyzed or that means hydrolyzed at the faster rate. Hence, the term kinetic resolution of the racemic mixtures. Increasingly, of course, far more applications of lipases in organic synthesis are emerging by their use in non aqueous media. Such media can be monophasic, biphasic, or even multiphasic, with one or more phases being a medium other than water or in fact the aqueous buffers. Monophasic non aqueous media include organic solvents which contain about up to 5% volume by volume of water. Such media have been described variously as nearly anhydrous organic solvents, low water containing organic solvents or even sometimes neat organic solvents. 
both water miscible and water immiscible organic solvents can be used. Room temperature ionic liquids in last decade or so have become another exciting option. Again, both water immiscible ionic liquids and water miscible ionic liquids exist. Ionic liquids are also called designer solvents. As a mix and match of an anion and cation is possible to obtain an ionic liquid of desired physiochemical properties. These ionic liquids have very high boiling point and are not volatile. Hence, these do not have significant vapor pressure and do not release volatile organic compounds which can hurt ozone layer. Hence, sometimes these are also called green solvents. Like in many other cases or situations, the label green is often debated and it is argued that all ionic liquids should not be called green solvents. Such debates center around the fact that the metrics for green solvents or green conditions which are universally applicable or accepted by all do not yet exist. Nevertheless, green chemists prefer to treat some solvents as green solvents and use these as reaction medium. On the top of this list is what are described as solvent free media. In solvent free systems, one of the reactant itself is used as the solvent. Hence, actually there is no solvent in such cases. For example, as discussed elsewhere, biodiesel can be made by using lipases. In some cases, the oil itself acts as the reaction medium. Only in some cases where oil is quite viscous, for example, castor oil, there it is absolutely necessary to add an external solvent to dilute the viscosity of the oil. Supercritical fluids constitute another class of green solvents. A supercritical fluid is defined as the phase at pressures and temperatures above the critical point. The pressure, however, is below the value required to convert it into solid. One of the most frequently used supercritical fluid is supercritical carbon dioxide. It is chemically inert, non-toxic and non-inflammable. It has critical parameters which are compatible with enzyme catalysis. For example, its TC is 31.3 degrees centigrade. Critical pressure is 72.9 bar. Other supercritical fluids are less compatible because while they may have low enough critical temperature, either they are inflammable or are much costlier or may have poor dissolving power for reactants. For example, Sulfur hexafluoride, which anyway has a high critical temperature of 45.5 degree centigrade. This slide is an illustrative list of some examples of lipase catalyzed reactions in supercritical carbon dioxide. In fact, lipases, apart from esterases, have been most frequently used enzyme so far with supercritical carbon dioxide as the reaction medium. Again, as you can see, transesterification reactions have been carried out for valorization 
of oils and fats. One of the key parameter in enzyme catalysis in all such low water media is the presence of water. That may be present in a small amount, but that amount is still very critical. This is true of lipase catalysis in nearly anhydrous organic solvents, ionic liquids and supercritical carbon dioxide and other supercritical fluids. Earlier infrared studies and nuclear magnetic, magnetic resonance studies had revealed that at least some water molecules have to be bound to the enzyme molecule to impart it the necessary flexibility for catalysis. This amount of water has been found to be less than a monolayer. If even this much water is not available, some side chains of amino acids which are hydrogen bonded to water molecules start forming intramolecular, intermolecular bonds among themselves. This makes the enzyme molecule extremely rigid. It is this phenomenon which is responsible for the well-known observation which was reported many decades back that a lipase could be heated at 100 degrees centigrade when suspended in an organic solvent without any significant loss of its catalytic power. The best way to express the water necessary for optimum catalysis is a debatable issue. Peter Helling had pointed out that water activity denoted by AW rather than the concentration of water as, as a molar concentrations or concentration of water in terms of percentage volume by volume or percentage weight by weight is a better description. At equilibrium, AW is same in all phases which are present in such reaction mixtures, the insoluble enzyme, reaction medium itself and head space of the closed vessel. However, he himself pointed out that for water miscible organic solvents, even AW is not the ideal parameter. Helling's group has also suggested use of salt hydrates to maintain or control the constant AW during reactions. The need to control AW can be appreciated by realizing that an esterification reaction catalyzed by a lipase will continuously generate water molecules. As the concentration of water goes up, the reverse reaction that is the hydrolysis of the ester will start. Any generation of water will also change the AW from the prefixed AW of optimum AW value. Catalysis in organic solvents also is dependent upon the properties of the organic solvents. In general, hydrophobic solvents are more suitable as lipases and other enzymes display higher initial rates in such solvents. This is because such solvents do not strip off water from the enzyme molecules. A parameter called log P which is the partition coefficient between octanol and water of the organic solvents is considered to correlate best with the solvent property and catalytic rates. Log P does not however correlate very well throughout the entire range of solvents. Hydrophilic solvents like DMF and DMSO are called universal solvents by organic chemists 
as almost all organic compounds dissolve in such solvents. In general, like most of the enzymes, lipases show poor catalysis in such solvents as these snatch away this necessary water molecules from the enzymes. Challenges like these makes low water enzymology an active area of research. It also induces search for other non aqueous solvents. For example, while very few organic solvents dissolve carbohydrates, many ionic liquids are excellent solvents even for some of the polysaccharides. There are two ways of obtaining a chirally pure compound. Both approaches can be used by employing enzymes as biocatalysts. First is to carry out asymmetric synthesis. Second is to resolve the reaction mixture kinetically by exploiting stereoselectivity of enzymes as we have discussed earlier. The asymmetric synthesis can start with a prochiral substrate or a meso compound. Theoretically, in asymmetric synthesis, all the substrates can be converted into the desired enantiomer. Thus, asymmetric synthesis can give yield of 100% and enantiomeric excess of 100%. In trans esterification of the prochiral diol, which is shown here, very high EE was obtained when vinyl acetate was used as acyl donor and lipase from Pseudomonas cepatia was used. As an ester, vinyl acetate acylates the enzymes to form acyl lipase intermediate. Hence, esters are called acyl donors in such transesterification reactions. A vari wide variety of acyl donors are used in lipase catalyzed reactions. The acylations with methyl and ethyl esters generally are slow due to the unfavorable equilibrium constants. The product alcohol, that is, the methyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol in above cases, can be removed, however drive the reaction further. However, activated esters involve a better leaving group and show a more favorable equilibrium. Oxime esters, thioesters and even anhydrides have been used with their respective merits and demerits. Enol esters such as vinyl esters are frequently employed as the product vinyl alcohol tautomerizes to acetaldehyde which drives the reaction further. With some lipases, however, acetaldehyde so produced results in enzyme inactivation. Such lipases have essential free amino groups for their activity and are modified by acetaldehyde. The nucleophiles attacking the acyl lipase complex decide the nature of the reaction. Water, alcohol, and amine lead to hydrolysis, transesterification, and amide formation, respectively. In general, polar solvents, when used as the reaction media, have resulted in higher enantial selectivity. A racemate may be obtained enzymatically or via chemical catalysis. With one enantiomer in the racemic mixture reacting faster, the kinetic resolution can yield a chirally pure compound. The racemic secondary carboxylic ester could be kinetically resolved via hydrolysis. The ratio of specificity constants of the enzymes for the two enantiomers is a more important parameter in a kinetic resolution experiment. Denoted by capital E, an E value of 1 represents a reaction where no enantial selectivity was obtained. In actual practice, E larger than 20 is considered a fairly selective reaction. E more than 100 is considered a highly enantial selective reaction. In kinetic resolution, the maximum yield of desired enantiomer is 
also the percentage e varies with time and percentage conversion enzymes show enantio preferences in organic solvents as well the slide shown now is purely of an illustrative nature and is shown here to emphasize that the nature of the organic solvent can influence the chemoselectivity of the lipases as well porcine pancreatic lipases gave different ratio of o acetylated and n acetylated products during trans esterification of n alpha benzoyl l lysinol with trifluoroethyl butyrate as shown here the regioselectivity of lipases may or may not be affected by choice of the solvent for the reaction medium butanolysis of an ester by different lipases showed either same or fairly different regioselectivity in toluene and acetonitrile many ideas have been advanced to explain dependence of enzyme selectivity on the reaction medium direct binding of the organic solvent molecules in the binding site modifying enzyme conformation or changes in the energetics of solvation have been mentioned as the reason for the observed behavior the regioselectivity of lipases may or may not be affected by choice of the solvent for the reaction medium butanolysis of an ester by different lipases showed either same or fairly different regioselectivity in toluene and acetonitrile many ideas have been advanced to explain dependence of enzyme selectivity on the reaction medium direct binding of the organic solvent molecules in the binding site modifying enzyme conformation or changes in the energetics of solvation have been mentioned as the reason for the observed behavior the changes in the enantio selectivity with different substrates even in the same solvent which is shown here it shows the complex interrelationships between enzyme enantio selectivity and the solvents since ancient times flavors and fragrances isolated from natural sources have been used in food and perfume and as perfume the first synthetic compounds to be used for such purposes were cumarin and vanillin in 2008 the market of these was estimated as 20.3 million us dollars the application domains now include food beverages cosmetics detergents and pharmaceuticals with the renewed appeal of natural compounds the market for such compounds which are now prepared synthetically is growing at an enormous rate increasing concern for environments and energy consumptions favor the biocatalytic catalytic routes for the synthesis of flavors and fragrances as well in many cases lipases are used alone or in concert with other chemical or biochemical catalysts fatty acids can be obtained by hydrolysis of fats and glycerols by lipases the gamma and delta lactones derived from fatty acids form important example of useful compounds naturally occurring hydroxy fatty acids can be oxidized to form gamma lactones and delta lactones for example gamma deca lactone has peach like aroma and taste hydrolysis of castor oil by lipase yields resinolic acid microbial chain shortening for this gives a pre precursor for gamma deca lactone this slide shows that how a precursor for deca nolid which has flavor or fragrance which is a mix of coconut and peach can be used alternatively it can use 11 hydroxy palmitic acid 
as a precursor and its oxidation gives the lactone. This slide shows production of flavors from linolenic and linoleic acid by biocatalytic routes. Cis 3 hexene 1 all is called leaf alcohols. As it is a smell of freshly cut grass, it is widely used as a blend in fragrances. Linoleic, linolenic acid can be obtained from numerous oils by lipases. Use of other biocatalyst C13 lipoxygenase, a lyase and alcohol dehydrogenase gives this leaf alcohol. Similarly, octane 3-ol and octane 3-ol have mushroom flavors and can be obtained from linolenic acid. Menthol is used as food additive, pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, toothpaste, chewing gum and many cosmetics. This monoterpene has eight possible isomers. The naturally occurring isomer has a suitable aroma. Commercial synthetic roots exist, which utilizes Candida rigosa lipase for enantial selective hydrolysis of the ester to yield menthol. On the other hand, Another commercial process starts with all possible eight isomers and uses enantio and diestereoselective acylation to obtain menthyl acetate with an enantiomeric excess of 96.3%. The hydrolysis of the distilled ester yielded the desired isomer of the menthol. Here are some other examples of kinetic resolutions of acyl acceptors, primary and secondary alcohols, various amines and peroxides have been kinetically resolved with the help of lipases. The nucleophilicity of thiols is low as compared to amines and alcohols for them to be used as acyl acceptors. However, one phenyl ethyl thiol could be resolved by employing its thioester as a sile donor. Candida Antarctica lipase using racemic 1-phenylethanol as a sile acceptor could resolve the thiol with capital E, that is the initial selectivity of 88, in, with 95% initiomeric excess. Diols constitute important building blocks during organic synthesis. Lipases have been used to obtain the various kinds of chirally pure diols using vinyl acetate as a sile donor. This slide gives an example. The monoacetate was formed initially followed by formation of the diol. Chirally pure diol was obtained with a yield of 44% and 95% in an initiomeric excess. So, in this module, we learnt about fundamentals of low water enzymology with lipases as focus. We also learnt about asymmetric synthesis, that is, how the lipases in particular can be directly used for synthesizing chirally pure. Organic, com organic compounds and chemical intermediates, drug intermediates. We also learned about how lipases could be used to kinetically resolve when such compounds are present as a racemic mixture. Illustrative examples of the use of lipases in both synthesis and kinetic resolution were also discussed. The use of biocatalysis in organic synthesis and inc is increasing and slowly is being adopted even at the industrial level. While requirement of using an organic solvent was important in view of their non-acceptability by envir environmentalists, 
use of the green solvents is making low water enzymology a more acceptable approach by green chemists. At the same time, the possibility of using different reaction medium, it is a discipline, sub-discipline itself called medium engineering. And this change in the reaction medium can be used to alter enzyme in enantioselectivity and that is a very powerful tool.